Hey, this is Tony, and here is the Nova Freedom. Don't let us looks fool you. The Nova Freedom is a multi-shot repeater, multi-pump, pre-charged pneumatic air rifle. That's right. It's a PCP with a pump built in, similar to the premium rifles available from FX, um, the FX Indy, and a couple other entries uh, from times past by other manufacturers. It takes an average 24 pounds of pressure to pump this rifle, and I have to say, based on comparing this to any other multi-pump non-PCP I've used, from your standard uh, Crossman multi-pumps to your Benjamin 392s and such, this one is a ton easier. Uh, I don't know if it's just the longer arm or the way it works, but this works really well. And I'm a huge fan, especially since you get more than one shot um, after you've pumped it up numerous times, not just a one-shot pump and dump, you will get multiple shots out of it. Now, just because it has a pump built in doesn't mean you're limited to just using that and that alone. On the underside of the rifle, when you have the pump handle in the fully extended position, you'll see a 4.5k burst disc, next to which is a fill port. That's right, this has a fill port, and it also comes with a fill probe. Real quick, I want to say thank you to the designers of this rifle for including a fill probe that also has a built-in male foster adapter so that you can attach it to your standard pump or tank or, you know, most fittings use uh, that female uh, foster fitting. So thank you so much for including that uh, with the rifle. Now, the rifle is set up for a 3600 PSI maximum fill 200 bar give or take but keep in mind it does have a 50 cc air cylinder so you are going to have to be really careful especially when filling off of a big 4500 psi um, scba tank in future videos we'll explain why you may not always want to look at that full fill for standard use though the nova freedom does have a two setting power adjuster it has a high or a low setting. Now, one thing that we did notice in testing this rifle, and did we ever do testing on this rifle as part of this review, was that the rifle liked the low setting a lot better out of the box for shot-to-shot -shot consistency, as well as for shot count and shot efficiency. It worked a lot better at low power. Um, than it did at high, and we found this to hold true when we were doing our tests regardless of pellet types used. Now, in addition to that two-level um, power adjustment on the side, which we believe is probably a transfer port adjuster, there is also the ability to adjust the hammer spring preload tension via screw in the back. This will directly affect the amount of pressure that you're putting against your valve, so do keep that in mind that it's an easy way to um, modify power, but also completely throw efficiency out the window. Now that said, in testing, we were able to get this to the point where we can get uh, 32 to 33 foot-pounds of energy out of this rifle, which was uh, fairly impressive. Hey, but wait, there's more. Yes, the trigger is also adjustable. Uh, you could adjust the sear, you could adjust the trigger weight and the travel and dial it in to how you want. Um, out the box, we didn't find anything wrong with the trigger, actually. It was set at a nice crisp, I want to say it was two and a half pounds or so, and we had no problems with it. In general, when we're testing rifles, we try keeping them as close to stock as possible. In future videos, I will be doing some tuning on this, but for right now, the videos you're going to see are what it's capable of right out of the box. So, big old bonus points, adjustable hammer uh, pretension, and adjustable trigger, as well as a side a power adjustment, so really nice so far. Here starts our groups. These were at 25 yards, one full magazine of 10 shots each. Uh, the top pictures are going to be at high power, the bottom at low power. Just seeing what this gun is capable of, we shot first of the uh, crossbow premieres. Our groups were between 1.2 and 1.3 inches. However, at low power, we did have a nice heavy group of eight shots that were about 0.8 inches from center to center. On the GTO side, we saw 
two inches on both the low and high power and we had one really nice cluster of what looks to be seven shots uh low power that were within a half inch center to center grouping uh for those gtos that's going to be on that bottom right picture right near the bullseye now we're moving over to the h and sniper lights at 14 grains and the 22 gsb uh exact jumbos on the right side uh, here we saw some pretty decent as groups as well. Uh, the sniper lights at high power, we had a 1.6 inch group at 25 yards. Low power brought us down to a little under an inch. However, you could take a look at that one cluster we have that is a half inch group. The GSB 1589s, on the other hand, uh, they both group solidly at one inch. We had a couple that looked to be really tight five shot groups but it wasn't easy enough for us to discern but you can take a look at the pictures and see where you have that nice cluster at low power right around the bullseye um, and at high power on the upper right corner of the target you can see a decent cluster there as well next up we have the uh, poly mags and the h and crow magnums um, so these actually also did pretty interestingly at high power, the polymags, we got a 1.3 inch group, one inch if you don't count the two flowers at the bottom at high power. Low power is between 0.8 and an inch center to center. When we brought this over to the crow mags, it was between 1.9 and 1.5 inch center to center, depending on if it was low or high power there. Now we move on to some of the uh, more respected pellets in the heavier um, weight range. 22 GSB exact jumbo heavies at 18.13. Uh, With these at high power, we got a 1.4 inch group, but at low power, these were doing great. We had a 0.6 inch center to center group out of them. That's a lower uh, left-hand group. At the other side of the screen on the right side with the H&M Barracuda Hunter Extremes at 18.52. These also performed rather nicely. At high power, we saw a 0.95 inch center to center 10 shot group, and we had a nice cluster of seven shots within 0.6 inches center to center on them. On low power, we saw between a 0.7 to 0.9 group, depending on how you measured it. So still, they both did well, but right now, that was a great group out of the GSB 1813s. So now we have the last two at 25 yards, the H&M Barracuda Match and the H&M Rabbit Magnum 2s. Uh, the Barracuda Match are 21.14 grains around the left. You can see the groups were actually pretty decent from them. Um, came in right around an inch group. Uh, on high power, on low power, we got it down to about 0.7 for an inch. The uh, rabbits, on the other hand, <laughs> they did not like low power. At high power, we had a 1.3 inch group with, you know, five of them we just basically stabbed a clove relief pattern in the center. Uh, but those last ten were all over the place. Not counting the crazy flyer, we still had a f two inch group. With that crazy flyer, it was a four and a half, almost four points and a three quarters inch group. Uh, there was some promise uh, with some of the shots, though, because you can see we had that nice vertical group on the right, but I don't think it liked those on the lower power level, which is what we'd expect from this really heavy pellet. Moving out to 50 yards, we're going to start with the GTOs. It was one of the six best performing pellets we had at 25 yards. The GTOs did not do horribly. Uh, our group was about 1.8 inches center to center for a 10 shot group. Uh, you can see that we did have a nice little cluster uh, near the lower left corner there. Um, and I think it just has to do with how light these pellets are. They just really were not working the greatest for this rifle at this range. I want to point out these shots were taken at low power. We found that to be a, giving us a best group at 25 yards. So we continued with that out to 50 yards. And the H&N sniper lights actually were one of our best performing pellets at 50 yards. Our full group came out at 1.6 inches. But if you take a look at tight group on the right side there, uh, that seven shot group came in at a little over a half an inch. 
Next, we move on to the GSB 1589s, and I'm not sure why these didn't perform uh, better. I was expecting them to do really well. We got a 1.7 inch group, and if we don't count one of the flyers, it'll cut down to about one and a quarter to 1.4 inches. Still, I was expecting a lot better out of these GSB uh, 1589 exact jumbo pellets. So I think this still has potential in this rifle, but maybe just not at this low power setting at 50 yards. Moving up and weight a little bit brings us to the uh, GSB 1813s. Uh, these also perform not quite as well as I was hoping, not quite as well I was hoping you were expecting them to. We got about an inch and a half group out of them at uh, 50 yards. I will note that I did find myself having a lot of bent skirts in this tin, so maybe this would have done better, but I think that under this low power setting, these pellets just really were not performing that well, 50 yards out of this rifle. So now on this group, it's going to be a little different. The first shot here, I had not f remembered to reset uh, my zero on my turret, so it actually shot a little low. So don't count that one when um, we're measuring our group sizes. The rest of these on the Barracuda Hunter Extremes, uh, we came out to about a 1.7 inch center to center group too if you count the upper left flyer there but i do want to note that you have one really nice tight uh five shot group in the upper uh right there and that one actually came in at seven tenths of an inch so that was also rather promising and finally the last of uh, 10 shot group of 50 yards is from the h&m barracuda matches at 21.14 grains these were really heavy pellet to be shooting uh, down range, but did want to show what these were capable of, especially since in other testing I've shown that I can get these to close to 35 foot-pounds of energy for five shots or so out of this rifle, uh, so this does have potential for hunting purposes. And you can see in general they were pretty well centered. We're at about a inch point seven or so center to center on this group. Okay, now bear with me a little bit with this next section. We're going to get into the weeds here because this is such a different rifle than your traditional standard PCP. I went through and did a bunch of testing on it in front of a chronograph, like it would a normal PCP, then I dialed it back a little bit. Ultimately, this is a multi-pump pre-charged pneumatic, so let's first start by showing you what it's capable of when you learn its limitations. So I shot a full string from a full 3600 PSI fill and recorded after every five or so shots where my PSI was based on the gauge on the rifle. From this, and correlating it to my chronograph numbers, I found where my sweet spot was for this rifle um, at high power out of the box. And that's what you see in front of you right now on screen. I determined that 30 pumps got me to a point where I can get 10 decent shots out of it with an average right under 25 foot-pounds of energy. Um, you know, a little over if I'm using a heavier pellet, but with the Crossman Premier 14.35s, it was giving me a, an average of 886 uh, feet per second, and the spread was a little under 14%. Not the greatest, but still really reasonable for just 30 super easy pumps. So, how did I come at this number? How did I figure this out? So I started with a full fill and did a full shot string until I saw my pressure drop off um, over the chronograph. When I looked at the numbers and put them in my graph, I noticed right here where my shot curve flattened out. And that's where I knew my goal was. I wanted to be in that for 10 shots. This way I can get a full magazine worth out. And that's pretty much what I did, is I just chased down the number of pumps that was necessary to get me my 10 shots um, out of my rifle, a full magazine worth. So with a chronograph, this was possible. Without a chronograph, you could still do it. It'll be a little more work. Um, just Google online for ways to optimize your stop shot strings without a chronograph. It involves you shooting at different targets along the line. So let's go back a sec to the full 250 bar, 3600 PSI fill except this time we're going to do something different and we're going to select the low power from the power adjuster on the side you'll see with this we get an amazing group 
Um, here we got a 26 shot group within 6.7% of each other at an average 15.94, so just a little under 16 foot pounds of energy and 708 feet per second. Um, please ignore the fact that it says JSB up there. This is with those Crossman uh, pellets as well. You know, honestly, that's really an acceptable group. Uh, that's on the nice side, and 6% is nothing to, to laugh at. Now, let's take things to the opposite extreme and show what can happen knowing this rifle a little more. Let's increase the hammer spring uh, preload and see if we can up the power a little. So, we turned in the hammer um, tension preload one full turn clockwise. With that in a full fill, we were able to get 17 good shots at close to 28 foot pounds of energy uh, within a 14% spread. It peaked at 31 foot pounds of energy, give or take, and our low was about 24 foot pounds of energy. Now, you got to remember, this is a 50cc air cylinder on this rifle. You're dealing with a very small amount of air. So this is a good start point. If you take a look at the curve, we do have a nice little bell curve there. But I'm sure people could do more with this. In fact, in experimenting, I found that I can get this with a little more hammer um, preload to the point where I can get five 33-foot-pound energy shots off at about... 24 uh, pumps. So ultimately, what does this mean? It means this rifle has a ton of potential. It's not without problems. There are a couple little quirks on it, but overall, I would highly recommend it. Uh, look for more details, more review, and more time spent on this rifle in the future, especially considering how much promise it does show.